Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and you can watch it later at your convenience. Uh, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Um, for anyone who's here not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So that would be similar to your state library. So we provide services. Uh, and training and consulting to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, archives, corrections, uh, historical societies, it's really anything and everything. Um, really our only criteria is that it is um, something to do with libraries. So we have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, you can see here is our upcoming um, shows that we have coming up in the next couple of months on Encompass Live. Any of these empty dates here in May will be filling in soon. And our archive shows, there's a link right here at the bottom of the page where you can access all of the archives that I mentioned before. Uh, today's show will be right there at the top of the list. And um, we will have a link to um, all of um, all the different websites that we're mentioning today will be in there as well. So on today's show, we have a, um, we do bring in, um, for Encompass Live, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that talk about services and resources and things we're offering through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers sometimes. And today we have a mixture of that <laughs> um, because we are doing a session today about new technology for the visually impaired of Nebraska, um, electronic magnifiers and braille e-readers, which are coming from both the Library Commission and the Nebraska Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. So um, I think I will just, um, we'll start, I think Aaron, I believe we're starting with you. Oh. Yes, welcome everyone. Yeah. So I'll just let you all introduce yourselves as you get to um, what you're talking about um, uh, throughout the show. All right, thank you, Krista. Uh, my name is Erin Brandyberry, and I am the Deputy Director of Services within the Nebraska Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Um, many of the librarians may notice my name because I was the one that sent out emails or um, was the point of contact for the CCTV project, which is what I get to talk to you about today. But before I get too far into that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what our agency um, mission is and the programs that we offer. So we have a three different programs essentially that we offer at our agency. We have a vocational rehabilitation program, and so that's for anybody who is interested in employment. Um, and then we have an independent living program for uh, youth and young adults. And so there's no minimum age limit on that. Uh, we can get referrals for um, kids um, as young as they come, but often two, three, four, um, when they're starting school or early intervention programs, we may be getting referrals at that point. Um, and then we also have a program for um, seniors. And so 55 and older, we have an independent living program. And um, we're all grant funded, whether it's state or federal. And um, as everybody knows with grant funds, it can really, you have good years and bad years. And last year we had a good year um, and we had some additional funds that we didn't know um, exactly how we wanted to spend them. And so we were just thinking about how we could outreach um, to a lot of the small areas of Nebraska that sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to have a presence in. Um, and also like getting this technology in the hands of um, more people than what we can serve at one time. And that's when the library um, system came to us because it's such a unique thing and that it's located throughout all of Nebraska um, and some of the towns that aren't even big enough to be towns or villages. And um, you know, it's just like, it's such a unique thing. So we were so glad to have that partnership with the Nebraska Library Commission. And so last August was when we started to roll it out. Um, and basically every library was offered to have a CCTV unless they opted out. 
Um, and so the vast majority of all libraries throughout Nebraska do have um, a, a CCTV is what we call it, uh, you know, desktop magnifier, um, you know, anything along those lines, uh, people may refer to it as. Um, and so um, we have um, Patrick Fisher here today, and he can go through a little bit more of um, how to use this device. Um, and so um, I just kind of, before I get to that, wanted to give a shout out to um, specifically the Kearney Library. Um, NTV News had done a news article on this project, and I just thought that librarian did such a fabulous job in showcasing what the purpose of these devices are and how easy they are to use. Um, and that it's not there to like read books or anything like that. We still have so many amazing low vision audio braille options through the Talking Book and Braille Services Library. So I just really appreciated that perspective. And if anybody else is interested in partnering on doing any um, like broadcasting or notices, I know we got a lot of hits on our Facebook pages of libraries sharing it too. Um, and I was just so appreciative of all of those efforts because outreach really was a big piece that we were hoping for them to get out of this project. Um, and so at some point, um, we'll have a, a slide up um, on our screen that has all of our contact information. Mm -hmm. And so if you ever have like a patron who comes into the library and you identify that it might be somebody who um, doesn't know about us or can benefit from our services, um, for our independent living programs, if somebody's struggling with their vision that's a visible thing to you, I can almost guarantee they're going to be eligible for our services. So it's really worth a referral. Um, and we can provide, often we can provide like these types of devices in their homes for them to have. So um, I really look forward to building that partnership further. Um, but this has been a great foundation and I appreciate everybody who has taken the time to learn the devices, figure out a place to store them and all of those things. So. Um, without further ado, I'll pass it along to Pat to give a little bit of a demonstration of how to use these devices. Thank you, Aaron, and thank you, uh, Library Commission and NCBVI for having this uh, presentation here. Um, I'll show you the Onyx Death Set video magnifier referred to as a CCTV. Um, it's behind me, but before I do that, quickly, uh, our company, Nanopack, we are the Nebraska premier dealer for the majority of products for the blind and visually impaired. Um, we represent Braille products, low vision, um, and then the blindness. Our company was founded in 1987. We're in eight states. In the state of Nebraska, I also manage a website called Nebraska Low Vision. Um, which has all the products that we offer and a person can actually buy those um, and you can always contact me. The, the thing that sets Nanopack apart from most companies like ours is that we're family owned, um, second generation and uh, just have a great team of professionals, um, some of the best at, at troubleshooting and providing training on Braille but then also the low vision products. And all of our products, our motto is, everything comes with lifetime support. And that includes the machine that all the libraries have. And so my mission to this you know, meeting here is for everybody to know, if you have questions or problems, please contact Nanopack at the base of the unit. Um, we put a sticker which was provided that lists our toll-free number, um, as well as it lists the Nebraska Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired. And at that segue here, I just wanna say that the Nebraska Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired is an organization I've worked with for 25 years. Um, we have customers all over the United States in different sectors. And this state agency is a true leader um, when Aaron and, and Carlos Servan, the director, when they came to us with this project, um, Aaron had everything mapped out. She wanted videos, she wanted labels, she wanted a new documentation, everything that she wanted. I was so proud to be able to bring together the people we needed to provide that. But um, with that, I'm gonna switch cameras 
and we're going to jump over and look at this. <clears throat> and you know how technology is, it always works, right? And here we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so this is this is the I'm I've got a headset on, so I'm not gonna look back, but I mean pretty much this is the Onyx desk set. And I'm gonna turn it off and kind of go through a couple things, but um the camera is on an arm and and that arm actually folds into the handle. And so it it's really nice for portability. Um, I was really honored to be able to deliver about a dozen of these to some of the libraries, more of the small towns. Um, some libraries are only open a few days of the week. And so we talked, you know, with, a, with each librarian about an idea would be you have an older adult home um, assisted living, independent living home in your city, you could take this over on certain days, an OT or someone, you know, a professional that's comfortable with using it and show people in that community who have low vision how to use it. Um, everything is pretty much controlled by this remote. Upper left is a green button. I'm gonna turn that on. Um, the camera has a light. And that light always needs to face away from the front. Um, and it, it's like a computer. So it's gonna take about 20, 30 seconds to power up. In addition, um, there was a quick reference card that we made and it's attached to a bungee. Um, and that's for you know reference. And if, if any librarians want the PDF file of that, email me and I'll be glad to send it. Um, but let's just put a document under, kind of get an idea. So the uh, the remote, I'm going to bring it over into the view. So as the the remote sits there, um, the green power button turns it on or off, plus and minus, plus makes it bigger. You can individually press it and move magnification by step, or you can just step on it and it'll it'll go up and down that way. And to the left, we have a yellow button, makes it darker or brighter. Um, those are probably the most common buttons people use, get it bigger, smaller, change my contrast and brightness, darker, lighter. Um, above the plus is this blue button, which is the mode button. And so right now, put my hand up here, we're in normal color mode. I push it the first time we're enhanced color. So that's a much brighter version of color. And if I step on the, the darkness, I mean, I can, you can really see it bringing it down dark, I'll press the, the brightness, it's gonna go the other way. So that's, think of that normal color, enhanced color. I push the mode button again. Now we're in a bright black on white. Um, and what I always like to say is everybody with low vision, um, even if they have the same type of low vision, macular degeneration, glaucoma, or other form, um, they all are gonna have different preferences. Some like to read in color, some like to read black on white. And we can zoom in, and again, I can change that brightness and contrast, and, and it's just so important, but, um, this device does not have any lights built into it, so it, it depends on the external light. I have a, a little bit more lighting right now because I'm, I've got a camera and I'm wanting this to come out good, but um, basically black on white, hit my mode again. Now we've got white on black, there's a yellow on blue, a yellow on black, and then it's back to normal color. And so, um, those are the modes that it comes you know, with. You can change it. A lot of people ask, you know, why is a color combination important? Someone with dyslexia, or as we say, um, someone who, you know, who can see, but they're, but they're print impaired, they cannot read text. Um, someone with dyslexia cannot read the black on white, but yet if they switch it to a mode, um, and there are eye doctors that can determine what color mode works the best, but I mean, they can also push the buttons and figure it out, but um, black on yellow might work for them. And, and so it's, it's kind of nice to know that um, for those people 
you know, you could go black and white. Or, as we like to, I like to point out, some people might want to come into the library to be able to, to write. And so I'm going to turn my magnification way down. Um, and you'll notice this camera, it's, it's adjustable. I can, I can do a lot with it. I can put it on myself for self-viewing, um, you know, personal hygiene. The camera also has a lens that flips out. And now I can look at something distance. And uh, wrong place, sorry. The, uh, and look at something distance. That's just, it's something that's hanging on the wall. Um, probably not going to be used so much in a library, but I, I did have one library that I delivered to in a small town, um, and they have a, a bigger TV, and they just thought it might be nice for, they've got a couple young students in their community with low vision, for them to be able to flip it, and whatever's on the TV would show up here. Um, but this is something to show you. So. So right now, I mean, if I wanted to write, I mean, I'm off to the right side, so it's kind of awkward. Well, I can just turn the camera and look at that. I can still keep it straight there, but now it's it's nice and even here. Um, don't want to get too fancy with my vocabulary, <laughs> but um, so that's a really nice feature. The uh, so going back to this remote, the uh, Power button, plus and minus, great, bigger magnification, less, brighter um, brightness, darker. This one to the left is called rotate. It rotates the image 90 degrees. And basically, the only time where it's really applicable, if I was doing something distance and there was, let's just say, a box that was upside down and I wanted to read the text, well, I could flip the image and actually read that. Um, there's also this this red button here, and I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom way out. So the red button is called the find. So if I step on that, it puts these crosshairs right in the middle, and I'm continuing to hold, and then I let up, and it zooms right in. Um, and I'm gonna back it down here. It has two bars, which is a uh, freeze the frame. So if I push that. It freezes that image until I come along and, and push that again. The uh, and then this last button is called focus lock, and and basically focus focus is based on the height of something. So I push that button. It puts a lock symbol up there, and now you know I don't know how it looks up for you, but it's it's out of focus. So I come along and I unlock it, and now it's back in focus. Focus lock is kind of a, a technology, or excuse me, a feature that's been around on these devices for 25 years. Um, and originally it was because if I was writing, I'd put my pen down there, I could lock the focus, um, and then I would know that it's going to remain in focus. But the technology, this is very advanced, you know, high definition video camera. It really um, doesn't have any problem in that regard. The, uh, let's do a couple other things real quick here, and um, just to say on the, the bottom of the remote, I can slide it off, and these are more advanced features, but it'll put two lines on the screen. That's kind of showing up, yep. And uh, in the left side, I can move the location of the lines, and I can move them both. Um, I can have the lines be vertical or I could not have them at all. And then on the right side is called um, shade. So there's the shades and it's kind of somewhat tinted and that's a blind. So in essence, um, I could have this blind feature. That might be for someone that really needs to focus on what is being, you know, what they're looking at. Cause you have to remember that some people, um, come into your library and, and need this, slide that back on. Some people come into your library and may need this. They might just need like a little bit of magnification. And so um, for them, this could be just enough, but for others, maybe they need it much, much larger. And so in that case, 
I could come along and I could have these lines um, would just make it easier to, to follow along as I read. And I can read a book, you know, by just paperback. Um, you know, and again, I'm just going to going to move it along. I can also move my camera. So this is just a, an awesome solution. And uh, I know for the libraries, you know, people with low vision, they, they live in all of our communities. And, and libraries are, um, you know, I having this project, I kind of got reattached with the meaning of a library. And when I was a kid, I mean, that was the best thing was mom and dad dropping you off at the library and you could you know, be in there for a couple hours and look in the index and find the card and then go find the book and, and, and check out books. But um, I have stopped by several libraries in my travels in Nebraska, and I always ask about the machine. Um, and they are used in the community, and they're, they're helping people, and that's great. But most important, you know, I started off by saying that, um, you know, most important to us is, is to provide that technical support. And so, you know, at the base, um, there's a sticker, which we sent this um, sticker to you. If you don't have one, if you need another one, we'll be glad to give it. If you need anything from me, please contact me. Um, you'll have my email and our phone number. But right down here, it tells you, you know, call the 800 number, our website, an email address, and, uh, We'll be glad to help you, and um, thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Pat. Um, do have a, a few questions. Um, yes. Yep. So the, that whole thing there is the device. So libraries really only needed that little much of, like, desk space to have it available right. um, for them. Now, about how heavy is it? Can it be moved around very easily, like if, you know, into a different part of the library or someone wants privacy in a private room, is it pretty easy just to yeah. pick up? Yeah, so, so I'm going to, I'm going to turn it off, um, and I'll kind of show you the, the camera, are we on, yeah, the camera just folds into the handle, um, okay. un unplug it, you know, what I do is I grab the remote, kind of stick it there, um, and, you know, we're off to the races and got to handle you're picking up with one hand easy yeah <laughs> yeah and and you know there there is a an option um if a person let me do this real quick there is an option if a person wanted um you could get a case for it um but you know like i always tell people i mean it it comes it comes in a a bigger plastic bag. I mean, you can just set this in the plastic bag, put that on around the top, take it with you. If it's raining outside, snowing, nothing's, you know, you'll be fine. And then, uh, you know, you're off to the races. But but you plug it in, and it comes right back up. And uh, well, I now that it. brings up another question that someone's asking, and I'm not sure who is the one to answer this one, but yep. um, is this a device that libraries could check out to patrons for them to take home? If someone didn't want to come in and sit in the library to read like a whole book or something, is this something that a library could potentially like put a barcode on, check it out and let people, you know, libraries do lend devices and things. Um, is that allowed with this program? Well, we still haven't finished the MOU because I haven't got it all drafted yet. So it's always something we could build into it. Um, okay. so, I mean, I think that the whole point is we want it to be in the hands of people who can find it useful. Um, mm -hmm. My only hesitation with a checkout system is if somebody like takes it home and they're like, wow, this is great. I'd love for them to get connected with our agency because for instance, this device is over $2,000 um, on our contract price, and that's a lot for people to purchase on their own. Um, yeah. And like I said, generally our hope is that we're able to purchase these things when it's really justified. Um, so I think I'd be really open to somebody getting to test it out at home because you know then they can see how it fits in their space or the lighting and those kinds of things. So we'll have to remember to build that into what we do in our agreement. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? 
Yeah, does anybody have any other questions for Pat um, or Aaron about the magnifier? And type into the questions section um, of our GoToWebinar interface there. Um, I think this is a great device. It's just so small and, and like, I mean, okay, it's not small, but it's so easy to use and just sit on a desk and you're good to go. <laughs> yes. And very impressive. Yeah. On a. And, I'm sorry, go ahead. We are very happy to have been able to help libraries, you know, just let them know that they, these were available. Um, as Aaron said, it was offered to all public libraries in the state, but some some did not um, get the one from um, you all. Uh, I know some of our libraries, they already had one of their own at, in right. a few places. Um, some of our libraries, we, as you mentioned, we do have very, very small locations in some of our libraries um and did not have the space for it didn't even have somewhere to, to set it up so um if you, if you um, did have that issue but i believe it's in most of the state of the libraries i don't know if we have an official count um but check with your local public library and see you know if you're if they um have it um and i was going to show um so so pat was doing a great demo here um i'm going to show my screen again here because on i know when the information was sent to the libraries. They were also sent, here's a video about it, but here on that Low Vision website is the, also another video that Pat has of um, how an overview of it and troubleshooting for it. So if you're a library that has one of these, these videos here would definitely be helpful for you to go look at. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, and I don't see any other question about this. So let's move on to the um, Braille e-reader. Who's gonna start with that, uh, Aaron or Mickey or uh, Gabe? Since we're loaning them out, who wants to jump in? <laughs> well, hi everybody. So my name is Mickey Saltzman. You're gonna hear me okay? So I yep, am. I am the technology specialist for the uh, Nebraska uh, Blind Vision Impaired, and I'm so excited today. <clears throat> to talk about the e-readers, the Braille e-readers. Um, this is a device that I have personally benefited from uh, over the past year. And uh, this is a, a Braille device that is issued to patrons of that are members of the National Library Service. Um, that it is based on Braille. It's a small, I'm kind of holding it up here. It's a 20 cell Braille display. A wonderful little device that allows me to download Braille books. I can uh, connect it to my phone, my computer. Um, it's got a small, as you can see here, it's got yep. a, a Perkins. Yes. Nope, I'm just saying, yep, we can see it. Looks good. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, um, it's got a small Perkins style keyboard. Um, it's very sleek, very lightweight, and these e-readers are issued to folks who want them, folks who uh, say you read Braille and you want to download books from the National Library Service. You can ask for one of these devices <clears throat> and they'll issue you one. And I've, like I said, I've really benefited from this. I've worked with clients who have really benefited from these little devices. And so I just pushed the power button here and I'm going to kind of go through a few of the things on the main menu and I will also kind of talk a little bit about um, what it does. Um, these little devices, now they, by the way, these are free. So um, there is, like this one, the one I have is actually a partnership with the National Library Service as well as Humanware. Humanware is uh, the company that designs these devices. Um, but these are issues, these are free devices to folks who, who want them. And really so many so many things built into this little device so for example it has a book reader and this is based on braille so the book reader allows me to read any of my favorite books um, for example um, this device has wi-fi so i can connect it to the national library service and unless and i can download braille books right onto this device and I can read them in Braille. Um, I also can, uh, it also has a, uh, it has a file manager, so I can copy uh, one of my favorite files. Um, I can create folders, I can move files around. 
I can even read text files on this device. Um, so if I've got text files that, you know, that I have that I want to maybe read, um, I can I can download them onto this device, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. It's got, of course, the date and time, so I can see what the date and time is. And this option here called the Braille display, and this is really a, a really neat feature because this device allows me to connect it to my smartphone, uh, iPhone, Android, and also my computer, and I can use it as a standalone Braille display. So it really makes it a really really nice um, for being able to, you know, use it on the go, but also use it as a portable device for my computer and a braille display. Um, as I mentioned, this device has Wi-Fi, so um, I have online services, so I can connect to NLS Bard, and I can download braille books. Um, it has a, a feature, so those of you that are familiar with NFB Newsline, if you want to talk about, as a service by the National Federation of the Blind. Um, I can download newspapers, uh, my favorite magazines onto this device, and I can read it in Braille. And it also has, um, in the latest update, they've included support now for Bookshare. And Bookshare is another accessible tool that you can use to download books um, off the internet in Braille, and you can read them. So, so many, so many features of this device. It is based on Braille, but you do have to know how to read Braille. Um, clients, when I, when I talk to clients about, about the device, I do encourage them that if they are going to request a device from a library, that they at least have to know uncontracted for sure, because, um, you know, you, you actually navigate the device and you read it in Braille, so there's no, you know, no screen or nothing like that. Um, it is done all in Braille. Um, if, if you look on the side of the device, um, it's got a USB-A port, and what this allows me to do is it allows me to connect to a thumb drive. So I can plug in like a thumb drive, flash drive into this device, and I can download my favorite books and text documents that way. Um, it also, this one also has a uh, SD card slot, so I can, I can, you know, plug in a, a, an SD card that has, again, uh, you know, Braille files or text documents. And I can use it that way as well. Um, this does not have any sound, so it's all based off of Braille. Um, as I mentioned, it's 20, it's, uh, 20 cells, so there is quite a bit of pain that you need to do when you're reading long books, but it's a very lightweight device. Um, I, can, I can use this device for note-taking. I could use it for, um, you know, things like that. Now, it does not have... Um, you know, built-in editors and things like that because you can connect it to your iPhone or computer and, and do your editing that way. Um, so it's got a built-in, you know, user guide. So we're navigating the device. Um, like I said, it has Wi-Fi. It also has Bluetooth. So Bluetooth is very important when you are trying to connect your um, iPhone or Android phone or computer to the Braille display. You might want to plug it in Bluetooth. So, you know, Bluetooth wirelessly is very important. So, um, really a nice little device. I kind of turned around here to give you kind of a, a different view angle of, of the, like I said, it's a Perkins style keyboard, um, two space bars on it. Um, it has a nice little, comes with a, a nice, you know, nice case so that in, in a, a lanyard strap so you can carry it on your, on your neck. Um, I use it, like I said, a lot of times I'll be taking notes or maybe I'll be reading a book outside or, or sitting in my, you know, my porch swing or whatever, reading a book and using it in Braille. So this is a wonderful thing that the Library of Congress has done, and I'm so appreciative of, of this. This is, this is really, um, it, it's, it's really, it, it opens up the doors for folks who, you know, maybe can't afford a Braille display because Braille displays, you know, they're very expensive and, and these free devices allow someone to get their hands on Braille. Um, Gabe, did you want to add anything to this? I think you really covered the the basics of using the the device. I, I can't read Braille, so I can barely turn the machine on myself. <laughs> <laughs> right. 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 Um, and we, we, they, we talked about. Oh, go ahead, Mickey. 
No, we talked about encouraging folks. So it is Braille only. So again, I want to reiterate the fact that you do have to know how to read Braille when you use a device. Um, you know, so that's obviously important. But other than that, um, they're pretty much issued to anybody who asks for them, correct? Yeah, I was going to ask Gabe. Someone just want to know how does someone go about requesting one of these? It's through it's through the Library Commission, correct? Not through the individual public libraries like the Magnifier. That is correct. Yeah. So the okay. uh, the individual must qualify to use our service. Mm -hmm. So they must be blind or visually impaired, or have a reading disability that or a physical impairment that does not allow them to read standard print. Um, once they get signed up and set up for the service, um, they then can ask their reader's advisor for one of these Braille e-readers. Mm -hmm. When that happens, your information, so your, your name, your telephone number, your address, but that's basically it, is sent to the state of Utah, uh, the multi-state center in Salt Lake City. Um, they're kind of a, a distribution hub for the western half of the half of the country for a, a lot of stuff that most of our patrons don't even see. You know, boxes that we send the machines in and, and braille paper that we use to print our newsletter on. However, they are at least for now in charge of distributing and troubleshooting the e-reader devices. Um, those will not come from us. Uh, Utah is is in charge of all of that. I, I do think that that will change sometime in the future, but that may be next year. It may be five years from now. I, I don't know when that's going to be. Oh, that we uh, might eventually have them here that we would send out ourselves just for Nebraska? Or would correct. Be oh, correct. Okay. I, I think long term, that is eventually what's going to happen, much like the audio players that we currently distribute. Right. Um, troubleshooting, I don't know if we'll ever be able to do that because at least at this time, we don't have anyone that can read Braille. Um, and if you can't read Braille, it's really difficult to use the device. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I can basically turn the device on and download a book. That is all I can do. <laughs> you know, I, I will also add to this, you know, you, you talk about troubleshooting and things. This device has a wonderful, straightforward menu. I mean, I can... You know, literally, you know, I got Braille display. So I've got, I'll kind of go through some of the other buttons here. So I have a next and a and a previous button on the outside. Um, I have the two middle pan buttons that allow me to pan the Braille display. I've got a home button that, that basically takes me to the home screen. And then, like I said, I've got a, 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 you know, an eight dot work and stop keyboard. I've got, you know, backspace, enter. And of course, if you know anything about Braille, you've got Dots one, two, three on the left, four, five, six on the right. It's got two space bars. And then of course it has, you know, the, the power button, which is used to power the device on and or put it to sleep. You know, it's just like a, a small computer. And then of course, um, on, on the on the, the ports on the left side is a typical standard USB-C port, which is wonderful because USB-C allows you to plug in the cord, you know, you can plug it in, in two different directions. You don't have to worry about, you know, plugging it in the wrong way or something like that. So it's very straightforward. And if you know Braille, um, really, you know, you get this thing out of the box, you plug it in, you charge it up, it's ready to go. And it really works pretty well. And because it's because it's on Wi-Fi, it also updates its own software through the updatable process, just like you would update your phone or, mm -hmm. you know, your computer um you pretty much connect to the to the service and it does its thing and it updates and uh really really very seamless for, for the patron who uses it that's good that you mentioned that mickey about the the charging because someone did ask how is it powered so it doesn't have to be plugged in you plug it in just to charge it up just like your phone and then it just use it until it needs charging again or... that's correct that's okay. correct and, and i will add um We've gotten really good feedback that they're very easy to use, and my contact in Salt Lake City has said that the vast majority, almost 100% of the people, if they have any issues at all, they have one troubleshooting call, and that's all they ever need. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they're there for them, yeah, awesome. Absolutely, so again, kind of you know, small enough, 20 cells, 
is decent enough to, you know, like I said, you read your favorite book or your favorite magazine or, or you know, books from the from the National Library Service. And so it's really, really a nice lightweight device that just really works, works very well. How much, how many people have we had um, specifically sign up for to wanting to borrow one of these, Gabe, through Nebraska? Do you know? I mean, yeah, we've had roughly 50, give, give or take, wow. uh, which is a lot more than I think anybody either in Nebraska or at the National Library Service was expecting because our, well, for example, our Braille newsletter only gets sent to 35 people. So huh. we assumed there was not going to be a huge demand for this device. Um, but it turns out uh, we had a lot more Braille readers than we even thought. <laughs> Need to push out our newsletter to all those people now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, we have this too. <laughs> well, and again, I just, you know, you they'd be able to take this device, connect it to your phone, and now you're reading emails, text messages, you know, um, you're, you're, you're controlling your device with this e-reader and it just really makes it. And I, I mean, I've had people, clients that I work with that they've just been like, you know, this is amazing. I want to get back into Braille again. And so that's great because Braille, you know, people think that Braille has kind of gone away and, and that's just not the case. Braille is, is, is you know, so much, you know, it's, it's such an important part of, of those of us that are blind and visually impaired. Mm -hmm. Um, we do have a question too here, and this would be I think for you, Gabe. Um, what is the is there any age restriction on uh, signing up and using our services? No, like, uh, children, not. adult, yeah, you know, obviously, and you know, and, and you nope, know, how there young. is no age restriction. <laughs> Just like going to the library, anyone can get a library card. Okay. Um, the the only restriction we have is that they meet the the medical qualifications. You know, they they do have to have you know. Mm -hmm. uh, a visual impairment or a physical impairment or or even a reading disability if they have dyslexia mm -hmm. you know as i said in our meeting yesterday krista the dyslexia isn't actually a visual impairment mm -hmm. it's a neurological impairment um but if you have dyslexia you do qualify for our service nice yeah. we'll get some more people using it absolutely absolutely um, it's a wonderful device yeah um, anybody have any other questions about the e-reader? Um, I do want to um, go ahead and type in if you do. I do want to um, mention I'd jump back over to the magnifier and I apologize I should have done this when we were talking about it first but um, Sarah from the Kearney Public Library is on the show with us today. Um, Sarah did you want to um, share about your experiences there in Kearney? You can uh, it's like getting yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. And it looks like the camera's trying to work, but it's not okay. uh, showing anything yet, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to get that to work or not, but yes. Um, and thanks for the shout out, Erin. That was super nice of you. Um, we did get one of the CCTVs at our library. Um, we ordered a special table to put it on that like people can raise it and lower it. So however, it fits their needs that way to sit there and use the device. Um, so once that came in, we got the device set up and we sent out a press release that we had this technology available. And we got lots of interest from the local media, which was awesome. I think two different um, TV stations came in. Um, I think there was a write-up in the newspaper. It was all over the place, which was really cool. We had some patrons call um, with some questions, like somebody had some technology that they had at their home, but theirs was broken, so they were wondering if they could come in and use this one. Of course, that's what it's there for. <laughs> um, people wanted to know if they could bring in their mail and their different documents from home and use this device to work on their paperwork yes of course they can do that um so we had some people come in and check it out and get a little demo and we just have it sitting kind of near our magazine and newspaper area and we've taught our library staff how to use it and it really is as easy as just powering it on and using the remote and it's super 
easy to turn on, super easy for people to use. Um, so we hope we'll have some more people in using it. It's always kind of a challenge to get the word out to the people that need it, but we had such a great response from our local media that hopefully they reach some people for us. So. That definitely helps, absolutely, yeah. And this is just one of the news stories that we saw when I just did a search for Carney and Magnifier, and yeah, it was in lots of different, um, announced lots of different places. And I know many of our other libraries have put out uh, press releases in their communities um, about it um, as well. We've seen them uh, come across <laughs> our social media and whatnot. Um, have you had anyone, because the a librarian had asked earlier, have you had anyone ask about borrowing it and bringing it home or people so far mainly just coming in and using it in the library? Or have you thought about that at all? Um, I hadn't thought about that, well, until they mentioned it. It <laughs> is very portable and easy to move, so I don't think that would be an issue. Um, I think the issue we would have would just be afraid that maybe it would get damaged and yeah. then um, getting it replaced could be tricky, possibly. Replaced or repaired if something happens, yeah. I love the idea of people being able to check it home and, or check it out and take it home and use it there if they would need to because that makes a lot of sense. But um, I think that would be the part that we would be concerned about on our end. Yeah, and that's something that you mentioned, Erin, it need to be thought through is how would that happen? What, how would that be handled? Um, you know, libraries, as I said, lend out, um, lend out everything, books, um, items, all sorts of things. And they always, you know, they know there's always a chance something will um, get damaged or go missing. I hope none of these would not go missing, missing, but, um, you know, books. And they do have that built into, yes, we know it'll, it could happen. And we have that built into our budget if we need to replace anything or there are, um, if someone does lose or damage something, replacement fees that they would charge the patron who um, did check it out. Um, so that would be something I think would have to be taken into consideration. And is there, you know, as you said, Darren, I think you said there was private funding that helped um, do this particular project. Is there funding to buy replacements? Yeah, it's all into our, like the grants we get and kind of how like the federal grants work is if um, at the end of the year, some states turn in money, there's other states who can ask to have that extra money. And that's kind of the scenario we were in last year. Um, and so we're in that scenario again this year, and probably the next year too, as long as everything um, keeps going the direction we think. But we know that maybe in five, five years, our funding might be a little bit tighter. And so we want to do this project now while we can get it out there, because then when we're not able to buy these devices for every person, we really think you'll see the foot traffic increase because we'll be referring people just to use these devices. So that was another thing I, as I'm thinking about like the loaning out piece of it, if we're telling people and they're counting on being able to always have this device every Monday to go read their mail or something, want to make sure it's always available to them if they are making that transportation trip because most of the people who need these types of devices can't just hop in the car and drive themselves. So just want to make sure we're consistent for them. And as you're, as I'm thinking here, my mind, my brain is turning, and you're mentioning grants and whatnot. And and I will say, if it is something that at your library, your public library, all of you watching, you think people do are mentioning, hey, I'd love to take this home, but you don't want to, like Aaron said, people are depending on it to be available in the library. You could apply for your own grant at your library to us, the library commission, or to other um, places that do grants to purchase a loanable version of this you know, buy a second one for yourself for the grant that you receive. We do library improvement grants here through the Library Commission. I would definitely, we would definitely approve one of those. Um, they're done for this year, 2023, but look for 2024. <laughs> but um, lots of other places that you can get grants from as well. And you could then have your, here's the in-house one and here's the one that we loan out. Uh, so um, that's a thought. Yeah, and I would like to mention, I mean, as far as problems with these, we this particular model has been in existence for about five years. The only problems we have um, is if they get knocked off a table, um, but, but a lot of students use them. So um, after three or four years, you can imagine putting the, the camera down, up and down every day, and you know, Wear and eventually, yeah. eventually some of the 
the joints, you know, some of the arm, things like that have to be replaced. Um, occasionally, if a person really used the remote a lot, that might have to be replaced. But um, the machine has a two-year parts and labor warranty. And so what I would say to everybody watching, if you have problems or if it's not working, contact us because we provide toll-free lifetime support at no cost to the libraries. And um, if, let's just give an example, a year and a half you know, into the warranty, it quits work and you call us, we determine there's something wrong, we're going to ship a replacement, there's going to be a label, you're going to put the defective one in the box and ship it off, you won't have to do anything. And um, it's just real important for us that the libraries know that you have nothing to worry about problem-wise. And if a person did get a grant and they wanted to purchase one or even an individual, you know, we'll always have special pricing for, you know, state agencies, but also consumers because um, we know how important these products are. Right. So that is someone where we would you people go to you the the nano pack to if they wanted to buy an additional one for their library. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, we're almost up to uh, we're getting a little close to eleven o'clock. Does anybody have any last minute desperate questions they would like to ask of anybody who's on the line? Uh, questions for Pat, Mickey, Aaron, Gabe, or or Sarah. She's still here. <laughs> um, any questions you want to ask, get typed into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, and uh, here is um, the contact info for all of the different things. Um, thanks to Aaron for putting this together for us. This one little uh, PowerPoint slide here of if you do want to um, just use the services from the um, Nebraska Commission for the Blind and Visually Impaired, uh, tech support for your magnifier, that goes to NanoPack, uh, Braille e-readers, that comes here to the Library Commission, talking to a Braille service. Um, and as Gabe mentioned, Utah is the one who Utah State Libraries, um, their blind and disabled uh, department is handling all of the uh, tech support for the Braille e-reader. Um, and we do have, let's see, um, Oh, Tawana, is this contact information sheet on the commission website? Um, it's, I don't know, it'll be on, um, posted with the uh, recording for today's show. So it will be, yes, <laughs> this this one slide. So you'll have that available as well. And then in, in this format, it's not on our website, but on the um, information and resources page, all of, um, I'm not sure if we have the e-reader stuff up there, but I can add it real quick. Um, and then otherwise all these other numbers are on our website as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I haven't looked. Ooh, I should have looked. If we have something on our Gabe, if we have something on our um, it's, it's, website specifically about the e-readers, or is it? We do. Um, well, obviously, four zero three eight. That's our main phone line to the commission. Um, uh, for the talking book side, not the ref desk. Um, and the eight hundred number is on our website. If you go to the TBBS main page, as opposed to the Library Commission main page. Um, and then there's uh, there's a there's a link that says uh, something like uh, additional. I think it might be under additional resources. You do have to dig for it a little bit, but it is there. Oh, there's the NTBB website. Yeah. So oh, you can find the information. Okay, so now we have another question here. I'm gonna bring up that slide again so people can take down any info they might want to. Um, oh, okay. Um, someone says, I work with college students with disabilities. Can I refer, can I refer uh, low vision students to NC, um, NCBBI um, if they are not Nebraska residents or should I work with the agency in their state? Oh, so are they students that are, are going to school here, but they came from another state? Either way, it's a good idea just to refer. So, um, because it depends on each person on where their permanent residency is. And 
generally speaking, if they're physically here, we're going to be the best able to help them. So if they're not already connected with services in their original state, we should be able to do it without a doubt. Yeah. And then she did clarify, yes, they attend college in Nebraska, but they're originally from another state, but they are physically here um, when they're going to, going to school. Yeah. But as long as we're not duplicating services, that's really the only thing we have to check for. Nice. Okay. So they may want to be in contact, you know, get them hooked up with our system, our um, department, but also, you know, if they aren't already, prompt them to check in with their own, in their own state, what is available when they're home. Yeah, yeah if they're, I guess they're attending college here, they can contact and, yeah. Yeah, great question. Yeah, all right, what do we got here? All right, any other um, last minute desperate questions you want to ask, uh, type into the question section. Um, any last words from any of you on the line if you want that you want to share? Uh, Pat, Mickey, Aaron, Gabe, or Sarah? I just, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity. And there's, there's no reason if you want to learn Braille and you want to use Braille, there's, there's no reason that um, you know uh, the cost is really not an issue anymore. I mean, it's you know it's there's definitely opportunities out there to to have your Braille device. <clears throat> Yeah. We do just have some thank yous coming in. Thanks all. It was very informative. Um, yeah, we definitely wanted to do this. This is an idea that um, Gabe suggested actually, because we had the magnifiers and their e-readers both becoming available at the same time last year. And we know um, some of our libraries and maybe their patrons were a little confused about which thing was which, who it was from, how they all work. And so we said, let's just get all that information out there in one place so everyone knows um, what's being um, made available. All right, so thank you everybody for being here today. I'm going to switch back to my main, there we go, Encompass Live page and wrap things up. So thank you everyone. Um, as I said, we uh, record the show as uh, we always do every week. So this show is recorded. And um, as you can see here, this is our event page for today's show. We've got links to all uh, the various websites that I've been sharing up here. Um, and afterwards, we will have the recording available. And I showed this at the beginning at the on our archive page here. This is off of our main Encompass Live page. We have all of our upcoming shows, and at the bottom, a link to our archives. Today's show will be at the top of the list here. Most recent ones are at the top. Um, should be up and, and available by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and uh, registered for today's show will get an email from me. And we also push it out onto our various social media. We um, use Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Uh, and, um, here's the Encompass Live Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, see here's a reminder to log in today's show. We do a little meet the presenters. And then recording is um, available. Where's the previous recording? There we go. Um, it's, we post on here as well. <laughs> um, and we use the hashtag, little abbreviation for the show, Encump Live. Uh, to push that out um, everywhere. So you can also, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like on there. If you like to use Twitter, follow the Library Commission's Twitter um, account and you'll see um, here what, what's going on. Um, I'll mention here while we're on our archive page, there is a search feature here. If you wanna search the show archives for see if we've done a topic on anything that you're interested in, you can search the full show archives or just most recent 12 months. And that is because this is our full show archives going back to uh, when Encompass Live premiered. And I'm not gonna scroll all the way down because it's a huge list. Uh, the show premiered in January, 2009. So we're in our 15th year, oh my gosh, of <laughs> Encompass Live. Um, and we have all of the shows here on our YouTube channel. Uh, so do so just do pay attention when you are watching an archive show to the original broadcast date. There's always a date on here that tells you when it was first done. Uh, many of our shows will be fine to watch, stand the test of time, still be good, valid, useful information, but some things will become old or outdated. Um, resources and services may have changed drastically or may no longer exist 10 years you know, from now ago. Um, Links may be broken or different. Um, people may not work at the same library they worked at when they pro when they did a show for us 10, 10, 15 years ago. So just pay attention to that broadcast date. Um, but we will always keep our show archives here as long as we um, have a place to host them. Um, something that libraries do, providing historical information. Um, so we'll always have all of them out there. But just be aware when you are watching any of our recordings. 
So that'll wrap it up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us on any of our other upcoming shows, but I hope you join us next week when we are talking. Um, it is about grand pads, <laughs> creating digital connections for older adults. Um, the last Friday, uh, the last Wednesday of every month on Encompass Live is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, Pretty Sweet Tech is when Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on the show and talks about something techy related. Uh, sometimes we have things other times of the month on that are tech related, but you can always depend on the last Wednesday of the month will be always something techy with Amanda. And next week we have a guest presenter coming in from the St. Louis County Library, Eric Button, who's going to be talking about this Grand Pads program that they are offering for their library, um, special tablets designed for older adults. So. Amanda will be, yeah, so that will be our show for next week. So do sign up for that. And, and the other of our other upcoming shows, keep an eye on our calendar. I'll be filling in these other dates here in May pretty soon. And um, so thank you everybody for being here with us today. And I hope we'll see you on a future episode of Encompass Live. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gabe, Krista, Aaron, Mickey. Yep. Thanks, thank everybody. you for being here. Thank you. Great, very informative. I hope we'll have a lot more people reaching out and using these devices. Absolutely. Yeah, all right. Bye-bye.